What is the current state of malaria vaccines currently and is the aim to induce with antibody and cellular-mediated immunity? Sure, thanks very much. It's, it's a pleasure to chat. Um, so there's a lot going on in the malaria vaccines field. It, it's a very busy and exciting space at the moment. It's important to remember the malaria parasite has a very complex life cycle as it cycles between the human host and the mosquito vector. But that does mean there are lots of different opportunities to intervene against the parasite with an immune response and that gives rise to the, the different malaria vaccine strategies that we have. So as you look around the life cycle, there are different stages that are susceptible to antibodies mm -hmm. and there are other stages that are susceptible to T-cells or cell-mediated immunity. So in essence, yes, antibody-mediated and cell-mediated immunity is important, mm -hmm. but it also depends on which stage of the life cycle you're trying to target. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're trying to prevent infection, by the plasmodium parasite, either into the liver or a red blood cell at the blood stage, then antibodies there are very important. And of course, CD4 T cell responses are also important to help provide help for the B cells that give you that antibody response. Whereas if the parasite is inside the liver during the liver stage, then you need CD8 T cells to come in to kill those infected hepatocytes. So, in general, both arms of the immune system are, are important. Okay. Um, so, of the vaccines that are currently being tested, which malaria vaccine is progressed the most and what immunity is it predominantly inducing? So, the, the most advanced malaria vaccine is called RTSS. Mm -hmm. It's been developed by GSK over the last 20 years. It's a recombinant hepatitis B surface antigen particle. And on the surface of that particle is a bit of a protein from the malaria sporozoite called CSP, or the circumsporozoite protein. And that vaccine is injected in an adjuvant called ASO1, and that stimulates a very strong antibody response. And those antibodies stick to the sporozoite and prevent it from infecting the liver. So this vaccine blocks malaria infection. Now that vaccine is the first malaria vaccine to have gone through a phase three clinical trial where it showed moderate short-term efficacy in the uh, target uh, infant population in Africa. And that vaccine is now in a series of pilot implementation trials in three African countries looking at how we could potentially use and deploy that vaccine in the future. Um, so what are transmission blocking malaria vaccines? So transmission blocking malaria vaccines are a different type of vaccine to RTSS. Mm -hmm. These actually target uh, sexual stage antigens of the parasite and also antigens that are expressed are in, inside the mosquito. Mm -hmm. So in fact, it's a, a very exciting concept in that you induce antibodies in the blood by vaccination. And when a mosquito takes a blood meal and takes up the sexual gametocytes of the parasite, it also takes up those antibodies at the same time. And those antibodies interfere with sexual development of the parasite inside the mosquito and stop its development, thereby uh, ultimately blocking transmission because if the vaccine works well, you don't get sporozoites forming inside the mosquito, so it can't go on to transmit. So in some ways it's a different concept in terms of vaccination. The person who's actually had the vaccine is not directly protected against the malaria infection that they have, but they are indirectly protected because everybody in the community has that vaccine, then you should block transmission and thereby reduce your risk of catching malaria. So it's basically you're passively immunizing the mosquito? Uh, of a sort, yes. You're, you're, you're getting an immune response from yes. the human into the mosquito that stops the transmission. Okay. That's actually very interesting. Um, so you talked about um, the blood stage of malaria being one of the potential targets for malaria vaccines. Um, why is it such a challenging target? 
Okay, so th it's the blood stage of malaria infection that causes the associated symptoms of malaria and the morbidity and the mortality. So a blood stage malaria vaccine will be very important for protecting against disease and ultimately death from malaria. And of course, if you reduce blood stage parasitemia, you will also block transmission. Um, the reason it's been difficult to develop a blood stage malaria vaccine, that there are in fact many uh, reasons. The, the mainstay approach has been to try and stop the merozoite form of the parasite invading new red blood cells. Uh, but for, for many years, vaccine developers focused on a small number of antigens and those suffered from various problems. Uh, those included polymorphism, so you got uh, strain-specific antibody responses, and some of them also suffered from redundancy, in that if you targeted them with a vaccine, the parasite had a backup plan, and it would use that invasion pathway instead, and a backup for that, and a backup for that. Um, there's also an apparent need for very high antibody concentrations to protect. Because the merozoite invades the red blood cells so quickly, you need a lot of antibody around if you're going to have a chance for an antibody to stick to the parasite and stop the infection. Okay. So all of those reasons have made it very challenging. Um, how has your research contributed to determining if it's feasible or not? So we spent a lot of time over the last five or six years asking the question whether there are actually better antigens within the merozoite that could be targets for a vaccine. We now know from various transcriptomic analyses that hundreds of proteins are involved in red blood cell invasion. And a number of years ago, we started searching for, for better candidates. And in fact, we and others have identified that there do appear to be better antigens that we could target. There are antigens that are relatively highly conserved, so they don't suffer from this problem of polymorphism, but also, importantly, that they are uh, essential for the parasite, so they're not redundant. Thereby, uh, they're much, uh, they're both susceptible to antibodies, but so important that if you target them, you can block the invasion process.